Welcome to Warren Yara's Yuran Yuri. I'm recording from the Gadigal land in the heart of Sydney, Australia. Warren Yara is a Gadigal name meaning to seek, which sums up the mission of our Health Professions Education Research Network here at the University of Sydney. And Yuran Yuri means many voices, which our podcast represents. So I'd like to pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and emerging of all the lands on which we're present and to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples listening. I'm here with Sue Randall, a senior lecturer in primary health care at the University of Sydney Susan Wakehill School of Nursing and Midwifery. Sue is here to talk about a paper she's only just published, appearing in volume 92 of the journal Nurse Education Today, Us and Them, the experience of international nursing students engaged in team-based learning, a qualitative descriptive study by Sue and her colleagues. So Sue, tell us a little bit about your background and the rationale for the research that led to the publication. Hi, Lynn. Uh, Thank you very much for inviting me to talk about the paper this morning. Uh, I think you've covered my background, um, primary health care and community nursing and chronic conditions. But in the educational space, I have an interest in active learning. Now, the background of this paper came from a successful University of Sydney Education Innovation Grant in 2015. That grant was led by my colleague, uh, Joe River, Mm -hmm. who's also co-author on this paper. And another of our team members is Tonya Crawford, and she's also co-authored the paper. So from on the back of the grant, we implemented team-based learning in several units of study. So this paper is part of a larger body of work for us. And when we, want, when we thought about writing this and doing some research in this space, we were surprised actually to find that there was no literature linking team-based learning, on which a lot is written, and um, culturally and linguistically diverse students. So it was a bit of a gap. Thank you. I'm really interested in people's um, publishing strategies. So before we go into the study, I wonder if you could tell us a little bit about what made you decide to submit to nurse education today? This paper could have gone in a a more general uh, journal because we believe that the paper is applicable to anyone using team-based learning and who has international students and Uh, students from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. But as the participants were pre-registration nursing students, we felt that Nurse Education Today was a very appropriate journal and it had a good impact factor too. So we decided to start there and they accepted it. So it was all good. Well, congratulations. It's a Q1 journal and, you know, many people would aspire to, to be publishing there. Thank you. So the subject of your work is team-based learning, but that means a lot of different things to different people. So when you say team-based learning, what exactly do you mean, Sue? Okay, well, for us as a team, team team-based learning is an educational strategy, and we're very much following Larry Michelson's model. Um, And so there are four principles of team-based learning. The first one is the formation of a heterogeneous team of students from different academic and social backgrounds. Secondly, there's an emphasis on student accountability, and that comes through pre-study and testing and peer evaluation. Thirdly, team assignments are linked to real-world problems, and given that in our research, we're working with pre-registration students that's really important and fourthly um, there's an immediate assessment feedback as part of that there's also three phases so one of those is pre-class reading Um, so the students should come prepared we might talk about that a bit more later okay (laughs) Uh, the second phase is a readiness assurance process where um we try to encourage comprehension of major themes and that's tested both individually and in groups. And thirdly, as I've mentioned, there's an application of these concepts to clinical scenarios. So it helps to bridge that theory and practice gap that people often talk about. Thank you. So 
So do you want to tell us a little bit about, you know, what you did? What, what methods did you use? Uh, and, and, and a little bit about the rationale behind using those methods. Yes. OK, well, we felt it was really important to take a, a qualitative view of this. We really wanted to hear uh, what the students had to say to us. And so we decided that uh, a script, descriptive qualitative methodology, you know, uh, Marguerite Sandalowski's work um, underpins that, uh, would be a valued approach which would allow us to um, have detailed and accurate accounts and to remain close to the data um, and to really hear the students' voices. So as part of that, we ran focus groups, one for each of three nursing subjects, and we had 15 participants across the three focus groups. So do you, can you tell me a bit more about your participants? They were... Um, so they were all international students. Okay. Uh, one of them had a background... Uh, she had a European background. The rest had... Asian backgrounds. And so in, in the entire um, TBL, because you talked about having a diverse um, group, there were, were these just the, the, all of, was that representative of the TBL group or were there other um, people there? We had a focus group from year one, from year two and year three. So TBL was undertaken by all the students okay. in year one, year two, year three, who were taking the units in which we had introduced TBL. But for the purpose of this research, we specifically asked for volunteers, international students. So there were a lot of international students across the three years. Um, but yes, so 15 of them volunteered. And we were very grateful to them, actually, for giving up their time to talk to us. That's fantastic. So, so within the TBLs, there were national and international students all mixed up, but you just, you interviewed the international students. Yes, we did. So without giving it all away, Sue, because I think people will want to, to read your paper, did you find anything that you really didn't expect from the data? We did. We knew anecdotally that... Um, international students felt that TBL offered a safety net in their studies. However, we, were, we got some unexpected results, and I, I'm not sure that they should have been unexpected, but we received a lot of reports of microaggressions, and which we have to consider as a form of racism, from the students within their group. Do you want to give me some examples of what you mean? So, um, when an international student would start speaking, but they would be spoken over. Oh. There would be comments, not so much in the group, but outside of the group, oh, we've got an international student, that will probably affect our marks. So there were issues like that, which are... Um, Certainly, um, some of those aspects are recorded already in the international mm. literature. But what was different about ours was really the level of microaggression, uh, which was apparent to the students. And to be honest, we were quite shocked by that. It was not what we were expecting. And the consequences of that were that although some students withdrew because it made them anxious and even more quiet... Others reported that the process of team-based learning allowed them to really hold their ground because they knew what they were talking about. They'd done their pre-preparation as they were expected to. They'd, that had also given them an opportunity to practice their language skills. And so it gave them enough confidence to stand their ground in the diverse groups and to really put their point across. However, that was not easy. So on occasions, they were still spoken over, but because of the individual nature of the tests and then the team tests, it became apparent, because we have more than one test in each unit, okay. that actually 
the international students were doing well. So as one of them commented, they felt like they won their spurs. <laughs> and so on future occasions, they were listened to more readily. So that was interesting. That's fascinating. So they had opportunities to show what they, what they knew despite their yes. linguistic um, difficulties at times. Yes, yes. So, so based on that, I'm just thinking about, you know, there's a number of different theoretical um, approaches you could have taken, or theoretical um, constructs that you could have drawn on to make sense of your data. How, what did you choose and, and, and why? Um, well, our theoretical constructs were initially based on um, the extant language of international students, uh, because there is a lot written about them. But also we built it around our own disciplinary and theoretical lenses. So our expertise in nursing mm -hmm. for the three of us. Um, for me, it's around my interest in equity and access. For Tonya, she has a background in intercultural communication um, and uses discourse and linguistic analysis. And Joe River has a sociopolitical causes of mental distress and critical social theory lens. So I guess we that's, brought all our backgrounds to this. That's fascinating. That's a, a very complex mix, but very, yes. yeah, uh, thank you. Um, so before we close, I, I just wonder if you could tell me a little bit more about team-based learning. And the question I have for you is, you know, if I was an educator, um, apart from what you've already said, why, why would I want to use this method of teaching? And, and maybe beyond um, the, con the, the, the constructs within which you are working. Mm. That's a really good question, Lynn, actually. And, and I think um, I have been surprised by TBL as well. What I would say is that it's quite hard work for the coordinator right. in the first place to set up. But then when you actually come to the tutorials, they're quite relaxed from the point of view of the lecturer because the students are doing all the work. The students, or at least the vast majority of them, and, and I do mean that, they do actually come to class prepared. Mm. Um, and, I, and I think in part that's perhaps, you know, if we think about Biggs and Tang, they say it does help when course content aligns with assessment strategies. And of course, TBL is perfect for doing that. Um, there's a real sense of satisfaction from my perspective in using team-based learning. And the students evaluate it very well. But if there's one thing that I think is very important, there's a real energy in the classroom when you yeah. use team-based learning. It's actually hard to describe until you experience it. Um, but that's something that I never fail to feel excited about. And so what I would say to our listeners is, give it a go and see for yourself. I think you'll be surprised. Thank you so much. I'm totally convinced now. Um, so I'd like to say thank you, Sue Randall from the University of Sydney for coming to talk about your paper, Us and Them, the experience of international nursing students engaged in team-based learning, a qualitative descriptive study, appearing in volume 92 of Nurse Education Today. Thank you, Sue. Thank you, Lynn. My pleasure.